With our trip to the hot springs behind us, and summer break underway, my friends and I temporarily went our separate ways. Yui returned to Germany with the intention to stay there until the end of the break, and has since failed to return any of my messages. Shinatsu failed to show her face around town. <laughs> oh my heart! <laughs> or at the very least, we never run into one another, as as the case with our last field trip. I've spoken through I've spoken to Shiro through the windows a couple of times, abusing our status as neighbors, but since but since our break began, she hasn't set foot outside or even her house. Ryo continued to, barbar to bombard me with texts and calls for the first week or so, but by this point he seems to have given up. So with my other friends all at an arm's length, the only exception to, the to that rule... Oh, she's, ho oh, she's in her Morning, house again. Aki. She's in her house again. <laughs> Is Megami. Yo, you're here early today. Of course. I wanted to see my cuddly wuddly Aki as soon as possible. Uh, uh, is that right? Since the two of us decided to officially become a couple, Megami and I have been seeing each other every day. Even on days when I didn't feel like going out, Megami came over to my house, happily chatting with my mother and trawl trawling through my baby pictures. So what's the plan for today? Going out? Staying in? A bit of fun? Oh, um, I hadn't thought that far ahead. Or rather, I had run out of ideas for us to do things for us to do together after the first week. Seriously, entertaining people is hard. Who knew having a girlfriend would be so much work? True, true, too true. Bro. Too true, bro. <laughs> what about you? Is there anything you want to you anywhere you want to go or anything you want to do? Hmm, let me think. We've already been all over town, and it is summer break, so why don't we spend the day in the next town over? That sounds logical, but even so. Now, we did enough traveling during the Hot Spring trip. Let's just stay at home today. Got it. Time for a sleepover at Megami's house. No, that's not what I said. Okay, you'll need a change of clothes, a toothbrush, and your sexiest pair of underwear. I don't think guys have sexy underwear. Guys have sexy underwear. Like I have those. <laughs> Girls, we're we're breaking all we're breaking all all of your dreams right now. Guys don't have sexy underwear, unless no! un unless the girls buy it for them. <laughs> Calm down. I was just kidding. Clothes and a toothbrush will be plenty. Uh, okay. I'll go pack. Wait. We're we're we're, we're okay. Okay. We're coming to my house. We're, she's gonna push you in the dungeon. She's gonna, you know, she's gonna be in. She's, it puts the lotion on its skin. It's gonna happen. It's, it's gonna happen. <laughs> Wait, why the hell am I packing? <laughs> I never agreed to spend the night at Megami's apartment. Hmm, <laughs> having a hard time picking your sexiest underwear. If you'd like, I could give you a hand. Without waiting for a response, Megami opened my drawers <laughs> and started rummaging through my underwear. How did she know which drawer my underwear was in? No, that isn't the issue here. It kind of is, though. <laughs> Megami, just calm down. I'm not done packing because I'm not going to pack. Uh, you're not? But when you get all sweaty tonight, you'll need something to change into. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I don't even know how to answer that. Look, Megami, I'm thrilled that you want me to sleep over at your house, but I don't think it's... Don't you think it's a bit uh, too soon? Too soon? For a sleepover? Oh, Aki, that's what you thought I meant. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, dirty boy. But it's not my fault. <laughs> Says the girl who paid me a sleeping visit. Still thinking about that, huh? <laughs> Oh, for the love of... Fine, I get it already. Let's just go somewhere together. You mean like my... No, it's your place! I swear she's doing this on purpose. Hmm, but where can we go? Decisions, decisions. Uh, I don't know. How about that thing you said? The next town over somewhere. You wanted to go there, right? The next town over somewhere? You weren't listening to me at all, were you? Oh, God, I give up. I'll... Keep packing. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll pick out your underwear, okay? No, it's that's it's, it's okay. No, I just can't win with this girl. Yeah, especially when she she wears the pants. Especially when you, <laughs> especially when you wake up drugged and chained. Because I feel like Megami rolls that way. <laughs> After packing a change of clothes, my phone, and a couple other miscellaneous items, Megami and I began walking to her apartment. 
I left a note telling mom where I'd be and that I made sure to turn off my, ele my electrical appliances before leaving, knowing exactly how slim my chance of leaving before tomorrow were. I should be happy to be going over to my girlfriend's apartment, but instead, it feels like I'm being taken to a prison. <laughs> this guy, he, he understands, but he just doesn't understand. He just doesn't know how to escape. He's in love. No, he's he's in prison. <laughs> no one calls. No one calls, no cell, no, no calls, no cellmates, and no chance of parole <laughs> unless I forge a shiv and jump out the bathroom window. I'll be trapped inside a small apartment with a girl who makes passes at me every chance she gets. Wait, did I just hear myself correctly? I'll be alone together with my girlfriend, a girl who frequently makes sexual advances towards me in her apartment, and I'm complaining? Megumi may act like a crazy stalker at times, but that shouldn't detract from how amazing an opportunity this is. Other guys in my class would kill to trade places with me. Tonight might just be the night when I finally... Aki, you have a creepy smile on your face. Uh, do I? What were you thinking about? I cannot let Megumi find out what I was thinking about the two of us doing things. Taking things to the next level. Oh, Aki. Get out of my head, damn it! Oh. Maybe she's just an alien from outer space. Following a surprisingly spirited walk over, Megami unlocked her apartment door and let me inside. I entered first, and Megami shut the door behind us, quickly locking the front door as to prevent anyone coming in or anyone going out. Ah! <laughs> exactly. Make your oh, <laughs> I'm in record mode. Uh, go for it. Make yourself at home, Aki. My home is your home. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Thank you. I will. No problem. After all, your home is also my home, right? Megumi, out of curiosity, does your bathroom have a window? <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess. Why? Just checking. No reason. Just planning ahead. Anyway, so this is Megumi's place, huh? Yep. If I'm not at school or at Hini's house, this is where you can find me. How can you afford this place? Do you have a job I just don't know about? Nah, nothing like that. My parents rented for me. Really? That's rather generous of them. Wouldn't it be cheaper just to live with them? It's okay. They'd rather have me here anyway. Besides, their house isn't very close to school, and it's the opposite direction to Hini's house, so living here is much more convenient. Oh, I see. It feels like Megumi's just glossed over something important there. But so be it. If Megumi doesn't want to talk about it, then I won't press, press the issue. Have you ever thought about moving out, Hiki? Me? Yeah, like living alone gives you a lot of freedom, you know? Uh, uh I don't think about... I don't, I don't think that would be wise. If I were left alone, I'd probably stay up all night playing video games and often forget to eat. I see. So he's the kind of guy who needs to be taken care of, huh? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> Nothing. Megami quickly wrote down something in a small <laughs> pocketbook and then turned to face me once more. Say, Hini, purely for research purposes, how many kids do you want? Ignoring how creepy that sounded, <laughs> none. I see, I see. Two kids, huh? Uh, I don't want any kids. One boy and one girl. Okay, I can work with that. No kids! Zero! Zilch! Nada! No children! Ever! And why do we- why are we even talking about this? What are you writing in that pocket book of yours? That- I feel like it should be like notebook, but anyway. Notebook of yours! Oh, this? Don't worry about it. I'm very worried. No matter what, I need to burn that book of hers. So, Hidi, since we're both here, alone, with no one else to disturb us, why don't we... The next town over, you say, okay, sure, why not? And my bedroom is right over... It's a, it's a far distance away, though. We'll have to leave soon if we need to make it back in time for tonight. I've also been thinking about names for... Yep, lots of travels to do, but better get going. Pack your most boring clothes and let's get going. Two can play that game, Meg. As I, as tempered, as, uh, as tempted as I am to play along, I'm not native enough to believe that Megumi's sudden child talk is unrelated to my presence here. So, if, if wasting the day, 
of the day in another town is what it takes to avoid becoming a teenage father. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Fine. If you're that keen, we can go out. But when we're done, we'll be coming right back here to pick up where we left off, okay? Oh, willpower of mine. You are in for the, re in for the test of a lifetime. I expected her house to be a lot more pink. <laughs> I expected so much pink. Yeah. I like how we just skipped a few days. That's interesting. Yeah. Key. Uh, hmm. Wake up, Baki. Oh, is that me? Or yeah, might as well have. Because okay. I think we all know who's coming from. I rolled over in my sleep as, as a gentle voice lured me towards the world of the living. Come on already, Aki. We're going to be late. As tempted as I was, my laziness prevailed. My eyes remained shut tight, and I showed no sign of getting up. If you don't want to wake up soon, I'm going to. A gentle voice whispered to, whispered to my, whispering to drew me closer, and I could feel someone's breath on my neck. No sooner had the sensation, a <laughs> sensation spurred me on than it disappeared, replaced by a shifting sensation on my torso. Is that me? Might as well be. Oh no! <laughs> he. <laughs> <laughs> Panting noise. Panting uh, intensifies. Why did you choose that moment to get up? No, no, no. The question is, why did that moment even occur? Or perhaps I should ask, where the heck is my shirt? <laughs> oh, he. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with sleeping topless. Just go right back to sleep. Don't mind me. Uh, just <laughs> like I could get back to sleep now. What are you even doing here? Where? What happened to waiting downstairs? Well, usually your mother stops me from going any further than the kitchen, but since she seems to have slept in today, so... Mom, I will never complain about you again. Anyway, now that you're up, let's go on a date. Huh? You broke into my house this early in the morning for that? Hey, I didn't break in. How rude. I had a duplicate made of your key! See, I mean, this is why- this is why I had never played much of the Megami route. People are like, oh no, guys, Megami's cute! No, she's not. She's terrifying. I'm scared. I'm telling you, there's a dungeon somewhere in a house. We just haven't found it yet. I'm honestly a little scared right now. Forget about that. Come on, let's get going already. Um... But we were just outside yesterday, and the day before that, and the day before that. What are you talking about? We only have another 39 days before school resumes. We need to make the most of our time together. Uh-huh. I scratched the back of- I scratched the back of my head, silently wondering which would take less effort, trying to convince Megumi that we didn't need to see each other every day, or just going along- or just going with the flow. Of course, no matter what I thought, the end result. Hurry, hurry, we have to get there before they open. She's cute, but it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> Had already been determined. Slow down, Megumi. I'm running on nothing here. I didn't even get the chance to eat before we left. You can eat once we arrive. Now let's get the lead out. Come on, Edie, we're gonna miss the opening. Uh... We're still an hour early. Yeah, but what about the line? We want to be the first ones, right? I'm not going to forgive you if we spend all day waiting in a queue. Please, let me rest. It's just a little bit further. <laughs> that was fun. We should go there again sometime. Ugh. Okay, where to next? The aquarium opens at 6 a.m., so it should be open by now. What do you say we take a look? Wait, is it still the same day? How is it still 6 a.m.? Ugh. Phew, I think I ate too much. Well, we have been running around since morning. I'm not surprised that you wo that you worked up an appetite. I guess, but I still overate. Ooh, look over there, Heidi! Crepes! It doesn't get more anime than crepes. You're so silly, Heidi. Why would you say something like that? No, I'm not being silly. I really am tired. I want to go home. <laughs> you could How could you be tired already? It's only 5.30 a.m. That's exactly why I... Let's just go. Alright, time for...
for another full-on fun-filled day with just the two of us. Uh-oh, I feel like, um... I feel like the mood's turning. Yeah, he's fallen. I feel, yeah. I feel like we're turning a little bit here. Getting tired of her. <laughs> a summer break finally came to an end. See, it's not a good thing when your happy summer break comes to an end. Mm. My life at, at last seemed as though it would return to normal. Cruel though it may sound, after spending the entire summer break with Megami, I wanted nothing more than return to our daily school life. Though the entire summer break we spent literally every day together, never going anywhere solo. Megami would would show up on my doorstep first thing in the morning. We'd spend the day together and when the sun began to set, I'd walk her home. Every day of my life followed that pattern every day without exception. So now, as cruel as it may sound, may sound to say, wait, a uh, thing about my girlfriend, I just can't get away from her. Dressed in my school uniform, I headed downstairs to eat breakfast with my mother. Morning, Mom. G oh, good morning, honey. It seems like you <laughs> I can see your face. I c uh, where well, it seems like you've really gotten the hang of getting up early. There's a good reason for that. On the summer days when I when I slept in, more than once I woke up to find my mother had let Megami into the house. Suffice to say, waking up to find her taking photos of me <laughs> as I slept was not an experience I wanted to repeat. You know me, I'm just excited for my first day back at school. Oh, I didn't detect any, even a hint of sarcasm in that statement. Of course, a serious student like me takes takes attendance very seriously. Hedy, are you feeling okay? Perfectly fine. Just ready for another fun-filled day at school with my favorite educational <laughs> instruction. Without saying another word, my mom picked up the home phone and began dialing. Hello? <laughs> oh, t oh, I forget how to say it. How was I saying it? Otum Otuma? Huh, sure. General Hospital. <laughs> I'd like to report... I'd like to book a room. Damn it, Mom. I told you I'm fine. And that's a hospital you're calling. Not a hotel. Oh, not a hotel. You can't really book a room. I'm just kidding, Hedy. Although she, although she said that, I can faintly hear the voice of someone else on, on the other end of the phone as my mother hang up. Really? It's good to see you're so motivated to go back to school. But I know the reason behind this motivation, or perhaps I should say the person. Oh, it's because of Megami, all right, but not, but not for that reason you think. It's not like that. I just want to see, I just want to see my friends again. That's all. Honestly, after seeing nobody but Megami for the entire break, I'm actually looking forward to talking to Ryo. I see, I see. So you haven't forgotten about your other friends after all. Uh, forgotten them? Is it, it is a bit unusual for someone to leave their friends behind when they begin dating, especially when you're dating someone as loving as Megami. I was worried that since you didn't invite any of your other friends over that you might have gotten Coop caught up in your new relationship that you might not make time for them. Is that really been what's happening? It's true that Megami and I have been spending an excess of amount of time together, but it's not like I've been avoiding my friends. Yui has been in Germany and and I have been and I have no way of contacting Shinatsu, so it couldn't have been helped if we didn't talk. Conversely, although I've spoken to Shiru a couple times through the bedroom window, she's the one who's refused to leave her house. What was I supposed to do? Drag her out? The only one I've blatantly ignored there has been Ryo, and that's really nothing out of the ordinary. No, I haven't forgotten about my friends. I've just been busy. N now that school's resumed, I'm sure everything will go back to normal. Well, if you say so. After eating breakfast with my mother and walking through the streets alone, I, I eventually arrived at school. Although I passed by the bridge, I saw no shine of Shinatsu, nor did I run into any of my other friends on the way there. So, where does Shinatsu go? For those of you who watched my other playthroughs, it's just like, did she find peace? Or did she just refuse to show up? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to know. All quiet so far. There are some people arriving, but it, but it appears as though I'm a bit too early to meet to meet up with most students. 
I thought that it would be a good opportunity, opportunity to meet up since Megumi has students council duties and to take care of the new semester. But if nobody else is here yet... I combed the hallways, searching for familiar faces. I did come across a couple of my classmates and people I'd met in passing, but nobody I could really call a friend. Even in the courtyard, Yui's favorite hangout was empty, making me once again question why I decided to go to school so early. Without spying any of my friends, I made my way to the classroom and waited for the other students to arrive. It took a while, but my patience finally paid off, yielding... Yo, Hideki, my man! So, as I continued... So, and so, I continued to wait, hoping for... Oi, Hideki! Earth to Hideki! Wakey, wakey, Hidi, Hidi! Time to get up! If you don't, you won't get your good morning kiss! Ah! As I felt Ryo's breath on my face, I frantically jumped back in my seat, almost losing my balance. Whoa, that was close. I almost lost my first kiss to Ryo. <laughs> so you're awake after all. Of course I am. But you were responding, so I thought you, you must have been asleep. Seriously, to think you'd sleep for the entire summer. So that's it. Ryo's in... <laughs> Ryo's in denial about me avoiding him, so he's decided to ignore reality. Although, enough about that. I just got my hands on one of the latest issues of Schoolgirls vs. Zombies 2. You know, you know you want to read it with me. I'd rather not. There's something about two guys reading arousing material together that's just... Arousing material? What are you talking about? It's an action manga, man. As as men, it's our duty to read it. <laughs> Ryo seems to be re to be rejecting reality more fiercely than I thought. All right, everyone, that's enough. Take your seats. While Ryo and I were were taking an unfamiliar voice echoed throughout the classroom. All right, interesting. We 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 got a glimpse of this guy in the Shiro route. Um, as I turned to identify the speaker, I found a middle-aged man, um, walking to the room in front of me. We'll do it again. As I, as I turned to identify the speaker, I found a middle-aged man walking to the front of the classroom. But rather than our usual teacher, the man was a complete stranger, one whom nobody present appeared to recognize. Starting today, I am your new homeroom teacher, Tomoya Ketsu Ketsuna. This will be my first day teaching at this particular school, so please bear with me. Mr. Ketsuna smiled at the girls in our class, showing off a pretty boy charm completely unbefitting somebody of his age. A new homeroom teacher every semester, huh? That's a shame. I'm going to miss old what's-his-name. With few students still chatting amongst themselves quietly, Mr. Ketsuna began roll call. There were a few empty seats, most notably those of Shiro, apparently, apparently still cooped up at home, Yui, no doubt, playing Tyrant and Megumi likely stuck in the student council room. <sighs> what a drag. My first day back, and the only friend of mine actually in class is Ryo. What did I do to deserve such cruel and unusual punishment? Let's see now. Next is Hino. Hinoara Megumi. Mr. Kitsuna narrowed his eyes and stared at Megumi's name on the class roster. His expression was complicated, and at a glance, I knew that I knew that he had met Megami before. Megami is doing some student council work, so she won't be in class until later. Mr. Kitsuna appeared surprised by my answer, staring at me in confusion as I answered. The student council, huh? As those words left his mouth, Mr. Kitsuna's lips curled into a smirk. <laughs> well, I suppose it can't be helped then. Now then, next up is... Mr. Kitsuna continued making the roll call, but his, but his expression failed to return to normal. He continued smirking to himself as though news of Megami being one being on the student council brought him joy. Hmm. After our first class lesson for the day ended, our class returned to its usual chaotic self. Numerous female students gathered around Mr. Kitsuna, asking him all kinds of senseless random questions. In response, the boys in class were seething with envy, already speaking ill of our new teacher. Despite the fact that several students hadn't shown up on the first day back, the entire class was alive with was was alive with with discussion, as though the break had never happened. 
Man, what an ass. I can't believe that guy is going to be our homeroom teacher from now on. Like every other male student in the room, Ryo expressed his dislike for our new teacher. Where does he get off, hitting on high school girls like that? Uh, Ryo, I'm pretty sure he's just talking to them. Yeah, right. He obviously has ulterior motives. Just look at that combed hair, iron shirt, and nice teeth. He makes me sick. Ryo's anger that the teacher takes care of his appearance? Well, <clears throat> it can't be helped. The more resi the more resilient girls are away, after all. I mean, could you see Yui funning over that guy? You'd think she would. Damn it. I'm <clears throat> I've never been so jealous in my life. And I knew it. Ryo's jealous that the girl that the girls are paying attention to our new teacher. Oh, calm down. I'm sure the girls will lose interest soon soon enough. No, no, you don't understand. What an attractive male teacher starts to teach a class with this many girls, something is bound to happen. And you're basing this on every manga ever. <sighs> Ryo's Ryo's tenuous gasp, grasp on reality is really worrying. Sorry, girls. I have to head to the staff room. Oh, oh, well, I'll do it. Oh, but why? <laughs> you, you do this one. Yeah, can you talk to us a little while longer? Uh, I'm afraid not. As a student teacher here, I still have plenty of things to sort out. Of course, if you're that interested, you could always keep me company. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. We'll be glad to help. Tailed by a small cluster of schoolgirls, Mr. Kitsuna left the classroom smirking to himself happily once more. Dude, did you see that? I wish I didn't, but... Yeah, I hate to admit it, but maybe you were right. No matter how you look at it, that guy is trying to charm those girls. Trying? More like he's succeeding. I don't know. I don't want to say anything bad about the girls in our class, but they really have no morals. Um, oh, is that right? The moment those words left Rio's, Rio's mouth, an irritated voice took us by surprise. And I suppose you're a saint, Mr. Every Girl, and this manga is clearly over 18. <laughs> oh, oh, I've had that conversation before. <laughs> Having entered the classroom without making a sound, Megumi immediately berated Rio. Hey, if it's the uh, if the author says the character is over 18, then they're over 18. Even if they're still a high school student? Of course, plenty of high school high school girls are over 18. Even if they're a middle school student? If if the author says so, then you're disgusting. With Rio down for the count, Megumi turned her attention to me instead. More importantly, good morning, Aki. Yeah, good morning, Megumi. Sorry we couldn't meet up this morning. I had to get here super early to get a start on my work for the new semester. A student council member's work is never done. <laughs> Sounds rough. Maybe it's for the best that you weren't here, though. The other girls are all smitten with our new homeroom teacher. Huh? We have a new homeroom teacher? And Aki's worried that I might find the new teacher attractive? Oh, what? Of course not. <laughs> Aki, you're so dishonest. Even so, you have nothing to worry about. I'm not some girl in he who goes <laughs> after every guy she sees. Oh, poor Michaela, poor innocent <laughs> Michaela. Though surprised by Megumi's uncharacteristically obscene choice of words, her statement <clears throat> did bring bring me some relief. Even if I want more time to myself, I don't mean it, it doesn't mean that I don't care about Megumi, or that I wouldn't get jealous seeing her with another guy. Oh, are you sure about that? Excuse me? No, not that. I mean this. That guy just took over half the girls in class with him. Are you sure you won't be swayed? Of course I won't. I would never betray Hedy. Ah, uh, Megumi's really done it now. As happy as her words made me, I can feel the jealousy of the, uh, of the class's male students being redirected from Mr. Kitsuna to me. Is it really such a crime to have a girlfriend? Oh, did you hear that, Hedy? Make sure to invite me to your wedding, okay? Ugh, don't add fuel to the fire, Rio. Like hell you're coming to our wedding? <laughs> and Megumi's just playing along! <laughs> oh, it's me still! Hey! Oh, honestly, I couldn't believe my ears when I heard you two had finally made it official. It feels like two you two were, were moving beyond my reach. Rio's 
Expression dropped, indicating a surprise, a surprise amount of sincerity in his words. My mind briefly flashed back to my mother's parting words this morning, and I couldn't help, but I couldn't help but have my say. Hey, Rio, it's not like that, okay? I'm not going anywhere. We're, we'll stay hung out and- Oh, Akia, I thought about it last night, and I decided where we should go this weekend. And that's cool. Anyway, we can still hang out sometime. And that stuff about Megami and I getting married- hmm? Your tie's crooked. Let me fix that for you. Megami put her hands on my torso and fixed my tie, then straightened up my shirt. Thanks, Megami. So, I was saying- Ah, jeez, just forget it. <laughs> Go have your happily ever after. You're just as bad as our new homeroom teacher. After storming off, Ryo hastily exited the classroom, paying no mind to the stares of our classmates. Huh? Everyone, for, even for Ryo, that was weird. No, I think that was about right. Or rather, can Megami really not see why Ryo was angry? Anyway, now that Ryo's gone, want to sneak out of class and make out? Ah, uh, I see. That certainly would be... What? <laughs> Just kidding. Aki's so cute when he's flustered. Ah, uh, ha ha. I laughed awkwardly while, in, while enduring even more painful stares from my classmates. At this rate, I don't think I'll ever make it out of this classroom alive. After our, <coughs> after our break neared to its end, our classmates slowly returned to the classroom, one after the other. The girls who had followed Mr. Kitsune to, this, to their seats, as, Rio, as did Ryo, and with our teacher for the next lesson, right on time, class began without delay. Even after the lesson began, however, the classroom was filled with chatter, and my mind was focused on anything except the lesson at hand. I looked out the, out the room window, keeping my eyes peeled for, Sh for Shiro and Yui, neither one of whom had shown up. I turned to look at Ryo, who was staring at the bra strap of the girl in front and breathing heavily and the girl in question who looked like she was about to slap him and above all my eyes rested on one person Megami this morning I felt bad about spending less time with Megami but with how the day had gone so far I can't say my desires were baseless not spending every waking moment together not joking around together and hanging around our classmates during our break our first day back has just been like our high school life used to be. Is it really so wrong for me to want that life back? Walking to and from school together is something, is something to handle, and hanging out at school between uh, and hanging out together between classes is nothing unusual. As long as we moderate ourselves, this relationship just might work out after all. Hmm. Serious relationship stuff. I've got to burp again. After... Oh. Oh. After my first normal day in what felt like months, a long night's sleep without worry, I woke up at an, at an unusual early hour once again. Despite the fact that the sun had only just risen, I left my bed without a shred of fatigue, eagerly anticipating the day ahead. Whew. Even if summer break is over, it's going to take a while before I start sleeping again. In fact, with the danger of Megami infiltrating my room first thing in the morning, still present, I can't afford to sleep in on weekends either. If I don't take some kind of some kind of preventative measures, I may end up going to bed and waking up early every day. I, sh I shuddered at the mere thought of having a regular sleep cycle. Oh well, I suppose there are worse ways to wake up. If nothing else, it means I'm wide awake by the time class starts, so my grades should improve before... Oh no. Why was I really just thinking about that? All of this extra time in the morning, and rather than focusing on video games, I'm thinking about grades? Who the hell are you, me? And what have you done with Hideki? Lightweight. Just because he's got a girlfriend now and wakes up early. No. Real guys? No, we play games and we don't we don't talk to girls. Uh-uh. <laughs> With my first identity crisis of the day complete, I headed, to I headed to school early, once again finding the campus almost empty, completely empty as I entered. Although, the f although a few students had arrived before me, it w I was among the first, a feat my old self would never have been capable of. Still, maybe I should start heading to school a bit later. Shinatsu wasn't at the bridge again, presum presumably because it's so early, and none of my friends are here this early. 
Uh, who am I kidding? Ryo is the only one who gets to school after I do. The others simply aren't attending. I haven't I haven't heard... I, I'd heard that the Shiro's, fa the Shiro's family was in financial trouble and that they had had resi um, resided themselves to isolation in order to avoid being found, found out by the people they owed money. Shiro refused to tell me any more than that. And since, and since we haven't had any contact e e e even once... Shiro has good reason to skip school, but as for Yui... Curious to see if my other absent classmate had decided to attend, I checked out Yui's favorite hangout. And surely enough, as I approached the bench on which she, she could usually be found, a certain redhead noticed my arrival. <clears throat> oh man, I haven't done Yui voice in a long time. Whoa, I can't believe it. What's wrong, Yui? I think my eyes are going bad, and my ears are too. I could have sworn I just saw Hideki. Is it really that strange of me to be at school early? Ugh, there it is again. Aud auditory hallucinations are never a good sign. Jeez, Yui. Jeez, Yui and her jokes. I clicked by accident. Anyway. <laughs> Here, I don't think I'm hallucinating on in on the rare occasions when you, you actually attend class. Ugh, the hallucinations are actually responding. I need to go to the hospital ASAP. Following through with her gag until the end, Yui left the courtyard, leaving me all alone. Shh, this must be how Ryo feels. Why don't why didn't we see each other all summer? Ryo's reaction reaction to act like I'm not I'm not even here. She may be even worse of a friend than I am. Mm. Somewhat irritated by Yui's prank, I wandered around the school for a while before ooh, excuse me. Before heading to my classroom. Before students had arrived during my side venture, including most of my friends, who had gathered around my seat. With only Shiro still absent, the rest of the rest of my pack had gathered. Oh, Yui's in class, that is unusual. Yo Hidi! Why is Rikyo calling me Hidi? Yo Hidi! What are you up to? Oh, Hideki! Ah, see, I already, I already lost your voice. It makes me so sad. What are you doing here? Ryo and Yui each, each greeted me in a manner of speaking as I approached the trio. I knew I should have picked you up this morning, Aki. You barely even made it to class before the bell. Oi, oi. I've been here for a while now. You guys are the ones who were late. Oh, you, oh, you mean that wasn't a hallucination. I guess I didn't need to go to the hospital after all. This girl. So, Hideki, waking up early nowadays, huh? What a waste. Man, if I were you, I'd refuse to get out of bed without a good morning kiss. Oh, good idea. You should you should give that a try, Ryo. R really? Yeah. Don't you think that? It would be nice for you to have you <laughs> forever. Oh, burn. I'd like you to be much better when I'm not her target. Hmm, I have to agree with Yui. It does sound like a good idea. Aki, make sure you sleep in tomorrow, okay? Oh, no you don't. I'm already wary enough of Megumi entering my home while I'm asleep. Ha! You hear that, Hideki? Megumi's telling you to dream forever! <sighs> no, Ryo, she's obviously offering to wake Hideki up. Honestly, what kind of twisted person would associate sleeping... sleeping in with resting for all eternity? What? But I... but I just... Screw you guys! <laughs> Having endured an emotional blow after an emotional blow, Ryo ran out of the classroom. Good, good grief. What was that? Was he always so weak? <laughs> I think Ryo's a little, a little valuable after, a little vulnerable after summer break. <sighs> Maybe just jealous because Megumi took you away from him. Not bothering to ask for elaboration, Yui took her seat. Anticipating the class would start before long. Hmm. Megumi appeared to be thinking to herself as she showed a conflicted expression. What's wrong, Megumi? <laughs> oh, nothing. I was just wondering if I should give Ryo back some of his Haiti time. Oi, oi! Don't treat, don't treat me with, don't treat time with me like some kind of currency. Though, truth be told, if Megumi, if Megumi splits our time with Ryo, I think we'll, I think we'll all get out, out of this with a little more sanity. Alright everyone, take your seats. 
While Megumi lost herself in thought, our new teacher entered the classroom, lightly pushing Ryo aside ahead of himself. Though the boys in class showed disgust, disgusted looks as they heard the new teacher's voice, they did as they they did as he said, and as did the girls. Mr. Kitsuna smiled brightly as he faced all of the girls in class, stop, <clears throat> stopping to greet several of them personally and bidding them a good morning. He then reached his desk, pulled out the class roster, and began to read through the names. Ugh, what a pedo. Yeah, you see the way he greeted the girls? What kind of, what kind of favoritism is this? <laughs> it's like too many voices. Somewhat, someone, let me the compass. Just time to. T Next time he touches me, I'm give. I'm this bash is going down. As I listened to the to the murmurs of dissatisfaction from the male students in our class, including one familiar voice, I remembered the way the waves our new stu our new teacher had made yesterday. Showing no interest whatsoever in the male students, he immediately focused his attention on the girls in our class, earning ample malice from from the class as a whole. What I remembered clearly above all else, however, was how he reacted to Megami's name. Amino Shiro. What, with Shiro still absent, Mr. Kitsuna briefly glanced around the room, looking for an unfamiliar face. Although he failed to spot Shiro, Mr. Kitsuna did, did briefly set his eye on Yui, to whom he winked subtly. Ugh, gross. That bastard, he is so dead. Yui, unaffected by Mr. Kinsuda's charm, cohorted her face in a reaction to his gesture. Ryo, on the other hand, seemed to be steadily losing it. I'm... 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 Ah! How would you say that? Ayumi. Ayumi, good enough. Ayumi, Ryo, go fuck... Go fuck yourself! Principal's office, now. Check. Without batting an eye, Mr. Kinsuna responded to, R to Ryo's seething hatred with a simple command. Wow, this guy must be used to being hated, given how he handled Ryo. Not that I can blame Ryo, this guy is making himself as an easy target for the guys. So, so someone with as little control as Ryo was bound to get into the situation eventually. Hmm, now we have... Mr. Kinsuna made his way down the roster. He soon allowed a, dub a devious smirk to run across his face. Hmm, Inohara Megami. Calling her name with unmistakable pleasure, Mr. Kinsuna looked around the room briefly before landing on the girl in question. I followed his gaze and looked at Megami, only to realize that she had frozen stiff. Megami hadn't said a word since the teacher had arrived, and I assumed that it was because of her outstanding classroom manner. Looking at her now, however... Come on now, Megami. If you don't respond... I'm going to have to mark you absent. Despite clearly knowing who she was, Mr. Kinsuna continued to leer at Megami as though provoking her to speak. But Megami, the usually cheerful, boisterous, outgoing leader of the class, remained silent. He you. When Megami finally opened her mouth, only a single word made its way out. Her tone of voice, usually energetic and carefree, was laced with fear, if not hatred. Whatever her previous experience with this teacher, it couldn't be good. Well, I guess that's close enough. Next up, Miss... Mr. Kinsuna con continued making, making roll, acting as though the silent exchange between himself and Megumi had never happened. Megumi, on the other hand... No, he can't be. Like Ryo before her, Megumi spoke to herself quietly, thrown off by the presence of our new teacher. Unlike Ryo, however, her tone portrayed fear and disbelief. With our, with our first class for the day coming to an end, the scene before us played itself out in a similar manner to the day before. Paying no mind to the glares from the boys, Mr. Kinsuna invited numerous girls from the class to join him in the staff room, smirking, smirking brightly at each of us, each of them, Every, every, brightly at each and every one of them. A few girls remained behind, including Megami and Yui, but the majority accepted his, his invitation without hesitating. <laughs>